Okay, so we're looking at an example where we have f of x equals x plus one all over x minus one, g of x is equal to one over x. First thing we wanna do is we wanna find the composition of those two functions, f of g of x. So f with that little circle in between g and then that is in parentheses x, that could be rewritten if it helps you as f parentheses g of x. So let's replace what g of x is. g of x is just one over x. So I'm looking at f of one over x. So I'm technically going back into my f of x function. And wherever I see an x, I'm replacing it with one over x. So doing that, I get one over x plus one all over, I see an x there, replace it with one over x minus one. I don't really like that I have fractions within fractions. And so we can get rid of the fraction within the fraction. One method is multiplying by that fancy one. That would clear the fraction. So looking at that one over x, that's the only fraction I have within the fraction. I would find my common denominator, which is just x. I'm gonna multiply through by x in the numerator. And I'm gonna multiply through by x in the denominator. So doing so, one over x times x, that just leaves me with one, plus one times x is x, all over one over x times x, that gives me one, minus one times x, so minus x. So there's the composition of f of g of x. So we wanna find the domain of the composition. So when we're finding the domain of the composition, we need to, we can't just look at the answer. That, that might give us the domain of that composition, but it's possible that it doesn't. So technically we have to look at the inner function, which in this case is g of x, and we need to find the domain of g of x. So the domain of the inner function, g of x, well, the trouble spot that we would have there is zero because I can't have zero on the denominator. So the domain of g of x is all real numbers except we can't have x equal to zero. So except x can't be zero. So technically negative infinity to zero with a parentheses because um, it's not including zero to infinity. The other thing that we have to do is we have to look at the domain of f of x, the outer function. So the domain of f of x, well, again, I have a variable in my denominator, so I'm worried about values of x, which would set that denominator equal zero. So I would figure out what that was. So x minus one is zero and x is one. So for my domain of f of x, x cannot be one. So the problem is that when I'm looking at the domain of the composition, I might have some values of one over x that would spit out, my inner function would spit out a one. So I need to make sure that one over x does not equal one. So let's just solve for when is one over x equal to one. Well, if I multiply both sides by x, I would get the x cancels, leaving me with one equals x on the other side. So x cannot be one, which is what we already found, and it just happens to be, what we found that x could not be for, for f of x for that domain. And so the domain of the composition, we cannot have x equals zero and we cannot have x equals one. So the domain of the composition of that function is all real numbers. There's multiple ways that we can express this except x cannot be zero and x cannot be one.
Or if it asked it for interval notation, we're coming in from negative infinity, all values of x up until we hit zero, really close, but not including. Then all the numbers close to zero on the right, up to one, not including. And then all the numbers from one to infinity, not including one.